guys welcome this is a general reading for the collective of taurus sun moon rising venus welcome cross watchers for those of you who are brand new to the channel happy to have you here um, say hi in the comments let me know where you're tuning in from still dealing with tropical storm debbie so having a clear moment but it could get very dark in here and the next rain band can cycle through. If you're anywhere on the eastern seaboard this of the United States, this storm will be impacting you. I'm sending you um, strength to uh, come out on the other side. All right, so this is um, the gateway of light activation. As we are in the Lion's Gate portal, we'll reach its peak on 8-8. So while I'm saying that, and it's in my mind, uh, still got the Lion's Gate um, special on my private readings, $88 off, links in the description box below. But um, this whole series of readings is dedicated to Lion's Gate. So we're going to be focusing on that. Let me pull a message for you from Gateway of Light Activation. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Higher heart, perfect for Taurus. Higher heart activation. Dropping shield divine love right because how venusian your heart is healed isn't that just beautiful it, it it is a portal way so your lion's gate a uh, higher heart activation for you let me get your message right out of the guidebook it says your message you have experienced much fear separation and heartache in your lifetime this has encouraged you to close off and shield yourself from possible hurt. For a long time, you've been trying to open yourself back up, but have been concerned about being far too vulnerable. This card shows you have realized that love isn't something you have to work for or search for, but your divine inheritance. You have also recognized that this energy isn't something that comes through relationships or external experiences, but is your natural state of being. The more you close off, the more you close off from your true self. The more you drop your shields, the more love is revealed. The more you express the love you are, the more it is reflected back to you. Love is your truth. Mm, that is so beautiful. Oh, Taurus, you're making me tear up. And my nose run. I love that higher heart activation for all of you. That's not just for the Taurus, but it's very Venusian, right? Venus is the ruler of Taurus, so I love that. Venus is now in the sign of Virgo, so she's kind of, you know, getting everything in order. Mercury has stationed retrograde today. I know. In the sign of Virgo, so uh, Venus and Mercury in the same sign, kind of interesting. They're both sort of getting into alignment. We're on the back side of, on the back side, on the, on the, on the back, end, back, yeah, we're just there. <laughs> we're past the new moon in Leo. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I have been like a shut-in due to this storm and everything else going on in the world. So yeah, the new moon is past, but it's not too late to watch the reading that I did. I also did the August 2024 um, Love Tarot Monthly Energy Update. Not too late to watch that because it's good for, I go week by week for the month. Lots of astrology to pay attention to. Okay, so I'm doing uh, my Twin Flame spread for this reading here we go i'll explain um once i get all of the yes perfect this uh your shared energy with your person is a healing card nice very interesting perfect mm -hmm. oh, i like it like it like it like it oh I don't know if it's like allergies from all the humidity and the rain and everything that's being kicked up. But anyway, overall energy, it's not just even the overall energy, it's your shared energy. Um, as you're working through Lionsgate as a 
um, a manifestation portal, an ascension portal. And for twin flame soulmates, this is the shared energy for you, Taurus. Or if you're here as the cross watcher, is, this is your opportunity to ascend through some healing. Um, what, is it, what is it that you're working on? What are you focused on in this connection? Fresh start with the Page of Pentacles. There's something that you need to learn. And this might be an opportunity for you to take the first step. Your person is, um, yeah, maybe on a little bit of a solitary journey. There's some personal growth that they're invested in at this moment. I like that. That is Virgo in the Hermit card. Now your karmic challenge comes through with Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords, this is interesting. The Queen of Swords sort of, you know, kind of approaches things in a very, associated with the sign of Libra, approaches things in a very practical way right, kind of checks all the drama at the door, all the emotions, and is just on a fact-finding mission. So your karmic challenge is, as you're taking, putting one foot in the front of the other in this fresh start energy, um, you know, you, you're you in a learning phase. There's some, some need for just the facts as you go. So that might present a little bit of a karmic challenge. Um, and for your person, their karmic challenge is, <clears throat> around some guardedness and maybe they're a little bit over overly self-protective they cling to things too much um so you know i'm going to clarify everything the opportunity is the nine of cups which is wish fulfillment and the divine guidance is speaking to you um not king of pentacles which is about someone who uh, you can count on Right, that shows up for you. That you know, not only just has some staying power, but that's dependable and reliable, and is giving. <laughs> this is not too giving. This is a little bit more stingy, you know. So let's see what we've got here. I also want to say that for me, the Four of Swords is a Mercury retrograde card. You know, Mercury uh, is air and is an air sign. Well, air, a planet that. Uh, rules um, Virgo and Gemini. Gemini is an air sign. Swords is air energy. And it just feels always to me that the Four of Swords is about a review. It's about rest. It's about recuperating. It's about, you know, sort of recharging our batteries, reflecting, reevaluating, reassessing. And there may be, and, and of course, that can bring about a lot of healing. So I, I, I just wanted to mention that since as I do this reading, he is stationing retro. Sta he is retrograde. Okay, here we go. Hermit again. For those of you dealing with a Virgo, a little extra added confirmation. Check. Um, could be that, and remember, this is the shared part of your journey. Now it seems like you may be coming in off your journey um, and, and prepared to take the first step in the new, on the new path. But it is about what you've both learned along the way. Um, and you know, there is energies of maybe a reunion, something where you're coming back together, where there's possibly a second chance, maybe some forgiveness, uh, if that's required, because we do have the healing element here. Second chances, forgiveness, reunion, re reconciliation, redemption, however it fits, it's a general, so you have to take it as it speaks to you. I love that for you, and there it is. The higher heart activation, the, the um, dropping the shield. Here is the shield. That center pentacle in the four of um, pentacles is always usually, not in this deck, but of course, is usually right here. He's holding it right in front of the heart chakra. So that's the message of the higher heart, divine love. Um, your heart is healed. Your heart is healed. So I definitely feel your person's karmic challenge is the shield and yours is a heart healing here, a uh, queen of cups. So this is really beautiful. I'm seeing both of you working through the higher heart activation, through forgiveness, through second chances, 
through both of you on this solitary journey you've both been walking and now almost like a coming back together. And you are prepared to take that first step and your person is coming in off their journey, but maybe still a bit guarded. Shielded is the word I will use. Okay, so Page of Pentacles. <laughs> yeah, you're taking the first step towards something more long term, correct? You're thinking about the future. You're, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So you've got the future in mind, life partnership. And there's our Queen of Swords, which is your karmic challenge. So you're on the road to find out, are we on the same page? Yeah, two of Pentacles, you're in an assessment um, energy right now. Two, uh, you're not sure what you're dealing with here. Am I dealing with somebody who wants what I want? Who could potentially be the masculine archetype of a life partner? Perfect. Now we know what we're talking about. Let's look at your person with the hermit. Six of swords. There's the apology. Ace of swords. I feel like they're going to come in with um, what you don't see, but what's playing out behind the scenes is something that will be revealed to you based on what they're learning, what they're learning about themselves. This is a card of self-awareness, of, of introspection, of um, it is personal growth, but it's also like how we understand what makes us tick um, and then how we become wiser as a result and how it kind of sets us free and brings us peace of mind and helps us get beyond the turbulence to something calmer, makes it easier for us to say the things from our heart that need to be said, to bring somebody else the peace of mind, to bring somebody else the healing. This is a higher heart activation for both of you. And I feel like this is not just in this person's unconscious awareness, it's playing out behind the scenes. It's like their epiphany is going to come through as a clarifying revelation for you. That's what's happening. Whew, just gotta chill. So, your karmic challenge is this queen of swords. And when I say karmic challenge, what I mean, you know, karma is our friend, guys, right? When shit's going on and things aren't working out, it's karma's way of saying, you're out of alignment, you're out of alignment, and then you tweak a thing or two and you're like, that feels a little better, but not quite right. And it's like karma saying, you're almost there. You're almost there. You tweak a thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Go, go back, go back, go back. And then you're like, oh, much better. Right? Because there's good karma. Some of, some of the time, don't you feel like things, when things feel really good, you go, oh, all the planets are aligned. Yeah, well, okay, maybe, but sometimes it's just good karma. So what I feel I'm trying to say is, you know, the karmic challenge is about getting into alignment and your karmic challenge is about kind of coming from, you know, level headedness with clear purpose, clear communication, which is going to be tough during Mercury retrograde, especially with Mercury retrograde in Virgo, which is a sign that he rules, super bumpy, um, non-emotional response, check your emotions at the door, no drama. Uh, it just feels to me like this is something because you're thinking about the future, which is, you know, can be a little triggering and we're doing a high heart activation. So here we go. King of Wands, the fool, right? I see it. I see the whole thing. So it's like, if this person wants me, they'll take the chance. They'll come and claim me. Otherwise, poof, clap, boom. That is drama. That is an expectation that leads to all hell breaking loose. So that's why you're getting Queen of Swords. Because this person very likely does have desires, but may not. If their karmic challenge is the shield, right? Um, 
they're not going to just take the risk. Okay? So that's why I'm trying to help you see that your karmic challenge is coming from something a little bit more practical minded, a little bit more, um, you know, be in a more uh, just, tr I'm just on a fact finding mission. This is truth seeker, truth teller. I'm going to tell you how I see it. And you're going to tell me how you see it. And then we're going to go to neutral corners and I'm going to percolate on it a bit. And then we're going to come back to the, <laughs> the drawing board and we're going to take a second pass at every, right? It's about understanding each other. And there will be truths to be revealed by this person. But you're, if you're true, well, whether soulmate, twin flame, whatever label, it, it is about mission and it is about growth, personal growth and understanding and becoming the highest and best versions of yourselves. That's what I'm doing here. So let's see your person's karmic challenge. We already know what it is, but let's see the details. Hanged man, right? Oh, see, they, they, they want you, they want you. That's, that's the impulse. Gotta have it, gotta have it. Boy, I want it, oh. This is somebody who has their shield up. And then they press pause. Why? Anxiety, fear, um, worry. And it's just, it's something that they need to sort of struggle with for a while. And I do feel that they're coming to a point where they're starting to understand themselves better. And there might be an apology and some, you know, revelation that might help you understand this better. But they're a work in progress too. They're a soul having a human experience. And you know, the hanged man is also about observation. And sometimes we have to take a good look at ourselves hanging upside down before we go like, that looks ridiculous. Why do I do this thing? So I do feel like this person's karmic challenge is dropping the shield. Um, because what they, they really do, they really do have a lot of desire. And if they dropped that shield, they'd probably be at your door in like nine seconds flat. No, nope, no warning, no phone call. They'd just be there. So I know what you want and I know what you're telling yourself and I know what they want, but I know what they're telling themselves. And that's why it's called a karma challenge because there's a misalignment for each of you there. So let's look at the opportunity is the nine of cups. And part of the message of the Nine of Cups is about wish fulfillment, sure, but the other part is about some balance and some emotional self-satisfaction and contentment, right? Gotta go, gotta go with the flow sometimes to a point where you say, this feels good, this feels good. I know I want more, but this feels good. I know I want 10 cups, but this feels good. So let's see. Seven of Cups, Eight of Swords, right. This feels good because if I push too much, if you push too much, here's what's going to happen. Blah, right? Seven of Cups, emotional overwhelm, confusion, second guessing, overthinking. I can't have nice things locking myself back in a prison of my own making. The opportunity is to just chill. Yeah. Death card is talking about, you know, there's an opportunity available to you for some growth change and transformation, but something's gotta be left behind on the cutting room floor. And this is it. The dramatization, the overthinking, the paralyzed energy, right? Um, Self-limiting beliefs. Yeah. So I think the opportunity is be comfortable with what you have. 
and let go of blowing things out of proportion and then freezing like a deer in the headlights. And I'm feeling like your person is the freezing like, like a deer and I think this is the blowing things out of proportion. That's my take. I'm not putting any labels on any damn body. I'm doing a reading. So for some of you, if that doesn't speak to you, that's fine. That's okay. I'm just saying that's what's coming through in the energies here. Take it as it resonates for you. It's general. Now, divine guidance is this king of pentacles. Four of swords. We kind of end where we began. Not like don't give up. There's there's healing here. The conversation will come. There's plenty of time to talk about the future and life partnership, but there's some healing that's needed. I feel like the divine guidance is hang in there. I know it's rough. It doesn't feel good. It's stressful and exhausting, but there's some healing that's needed, especially for this person. The conversation will follow. Focus on the healing. That's the card we opened with. And you're both coming in off the grid, so to speak. You're both coming in from time to yourselves. You're ahead of this person, though. I know just a little bit ahead, but you're ahead. Okay? Taurus, this is like one of my favorite readings ever. And I know that that might not make sense to you. I have my reasons. I'll talk about it in the extended. And I'm focusing on this person. I'm leaving it open for all these readings to, to whoever I feel needs a little more extra attention energetically. And that's what I'm going to do. And in that reading, I'm looking at the higher vibration and the lower vibration, like angel, devil. What's going on with this person? I want to see some hidden energies, something you may not know but would want to. What do they want you to know? What's their direct message to you? And then there will be some other things I'm going to explore. So that link is below. Um, and yeah, before I give you the astrology, if you enjoy the reading, if it spoke to you, if it helped you understand something better, um, gave you some clarity, some confirmation, please, if you haven't already, subscribe below. That is the only way I can grow this thing. Um, and so YouTube knows that, oh yeah, she really wants to do this. So we're going to show her videos to other people. Thank you for that. So, um, and I did tell you about my Lionsgate special private readings and the links to the extended are below. Okay. So here we go. We have the hermit out twice. That is Virgo energy. Venus, well, no. Yeah. Venus is right now. Oh, Venus is in Leo. Mercury is in Virgo and, um, what else is happening in Virgo? What else did I say was in Virgo? Anyway, um, Hermit is Virgo. That's came out twice. We have Judgment is um, Pluto, which rules Scorpio. Queen of Cups is Cancerian energy. Page of Pentacles. I still got to think about that Virgo thing. Page of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Queen of Swords came out twice. That is Libra energy. We have the Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. We've got the Queen. Uh, the King of Wands is Leo. The Fool is the planet Uranus, which rules Aquarius. The Tower is um, Mars, which rules Aries. Um, Hanged Man is Neptune, which rules Pisces. The Knight of Wands is Sagittarian energy. Then we have the Death card is Scorpio. The King of Pentacles is Taurus. Definitely a Taurian reading. And let's see, did I get everything? I think I did. I love your higher heart activation. Let me double check because now it's going to drive me crazy till I figure it out. Mercury is in Virgo, retrograde. Venus is in Virgo. Oh. Venus just moved into Virgo, guys. Okay, so here we go. That's it. I'm headed to the extended now. I'll see you there.